October is here, so I want to talk about Hacktoberfest and open source and some of the stuff that I plan to work on in the month of October. So if you are unfamiliar with Hacktoberfest, so Hacktoberfest is this uh, month-long event where we celebrate all things open source. So this started many, many years ago, and it was just contributions to open source originally, and we started to uh, do more and more with it. So whether you are contributing to open source or maintaining an open source project or finding ways to elevate open source through blogging, there's all sorts of different things that are um, essentially a Hacktoberfest qualified event. So what, what is it, right? So it's that event that I mentioned, and the goal here is to get people doing things in the open source ecosystem. So if you're a maintainer, maybe that is helping introduce people to your project and getting them up to speed and helping people contribute, even if they're a first-time contributor. Or maybe you are someone who uses open source and have not really done anything open source. Maybe you've open sourced a couple of your own projects, but you want to contribute to a larger pro, uh, a larger system, maybe something like Kubernetes, or maybe you want to contribute to Zig itself, um, or, you know, plenty of other open source options. Uh, another thing that they have a call out here is uh, donating to open source projects, which, whether we like it or not, money helps everyone, uh, including open source maintainers, so that's something to think about too. But I'm just going to show you um, the main method of participation for Hacktoberfest. They have their values here. You should read through these. The short and sweet is everyone's welcome. Quantity is fun, but quality is key short-term action, and long-term impact. Information on how to participate, so you register. Then you can use pull requests in GitHub or GitLab. Unfortunately, other systems like Git-T um, or Codeberg, Bitbucket, they uh, aren't supported at this point in time, so it's just GitHub and GitLab at this point. But the goal is to create six high-quality pull or merge requests between October 1st and October 31st, with maintainers accepting those requests for them to count towards your total, you get a digital badge for participating. You get a digital badge whenever you hit your six PRs that have been accepted. Um, and the digital badges, they're not NFTs or anything like that. They use a uh, tool called Hollow Pin. So, yeah, um, it's it's exactly what it sounds like. There's a digital badge. There's Here's the Hacktoberfest level zero badge that someone has just recently achieved. Uh, I should be able to log into mine. And we can take a look at some of my previous badges uh, as soon as I find out how. Yeah, so this was the registration badge for 2022, the level one, level three, all those badges. There were some extra badges that came in through different years. So like DigitalOcean is uh, one of the organizations that runs Hacktoberfest, like this, this program. So they often sponsor it in some way, shape, or form, not only just running it, but um, sometimes with other stuff. In the past, they did some really cool stuff where like, you got free credits to DigitalOcean and AppRite for participating, and even more if you were to um, knock out the six PRs. I don't know if that'll happen this year or what the deal is. They also used to do t-shirts. They stopped doing t-shirts. I think they're back this year. Uh, yeah, t-shirts. So uh, and, and Tree Nation, so you can also, uh, they'll plant trees on your behalf. So some pretty good things all in all, contributing to open source, the environment, all sorts of fun stuff. So how's this work, right? So you can pull up um, your profile via Start Hacking. It'll prompt you to log in. Um, you can see that I've got some in progress. There's some information on the badges, Tree Nation, pull requests. Uh, in full disclosure, two of these pull requests are to my own open source project, and then one's not participating. So um, let's talk a little bit about participation because this is important if you are going to do this. So the... Hacktoberfest repos that are participating use labels. And if you're unfamiliar with labels, they pop up here in GitHub. I don't really know what they look like in GitLab, but there's a Hacktoberfest label on the repo. So this repository is participating in Hacktoberfest. What's really nice about this is you can click the label and you can find a list of repos that have the uh, Hacktoberfest label. Actually, they're called topics in GitHub, sorry. So you can um, also filter these by programming language here, which is interesting. You can also filter them by programming language here. This one's kind of cool because I'm going to be working in Zig this month, and Zig's not on this list, so how do I find it, right? So I can just change this to Go, and you can see here I have a query parameter that says L is equal to Go. Let's just change this to Zig, and now we have Zig options. So uh, yeah, so like ODIF is a Hacktoberfest 
um, repository. Very fast SIMD, first image comparison library with Node.js API. Pluto is an x86 kernel written in Zig. It's also Hacktoberfest. Uh, create Postgres extensions using Zig. Scoop search, drop in replacement. Zig adaptive lock. HTS lib support for uh, with Zig. Zig veil. Hey, look me. HTTP spec. Um, uh, <laughs> uh, rock CLI platform Zig. Um, fun is a statically typed language that transpiles to C, so you could work on a, a language written in Zig. All sorts of stuff. Disk usage waybar. That's cool. That actually sounds like something I may be interested in, uh, either using or um, not uh, using and, and contributing to it. But um, yeah, so you can find projects that you're interested in that way. Um, but what does it look like here? So we have a repository that's not participating. So I took a, the Zig curl project and added support for selecting an HTTP version with the easy path. Uh, we can view that on GitHub as well. Keep in mind, this one's not participating. So despite me doing this, I don't get credit for Hacktoberfest with this. Um, there is a way to get credit after the fact, even if the repository is not supporting Hacktoberfest. It's, it's kind of a bit of a pain. And my suggestion would be if you are really focused on hitting the six goals, participate with Hacktoberfest labeled repos. And the reason why, I know that sounds weird, so let me explain why. The reason why is by putting this Hacktoberfest label on your repo, you are essentially saying, hey, I understand that I am putting this out in front of a bunch of people who have no idea what this project is. Maybe they want to try open source for the first time. Maybe they want to find new things to contribute to. And I am willing to help them uh, get onboarded with the project, help them get up to speed. I'm willing to discuss things and issues and not just build them myself. Um, and I want people to start building this with me. That's essentially what this is saying. And not every project wants that, right? Like that's, that's a lot to ask. So I've got this ZigCurl project that I contributed to the other day, um, Zig bindings for libcurl. You see there's not a Hacktoberfest label here. Um, the other way that you can get uh, credit is that there's a Hacktoberfest accepted label that they can put on the pull request once it's been merged in. Um, and if they do that, you'll get credit for it. Uh, my suggestion would be not to ask people for this. Um, the shirt is cool. The, the six items is cool. But what's really cool is contributing to open source. So I wouldn't uh, personally recommend bothering maintainers who aren't participating in Hacktoberfest. I wouldn't try to get them to participate in Hacktoberfest. You could mention it if you're having a discussion with them and say, you know, Hacktoberfest brought me in and I see that you're not participating, but I really wanted to do this pull request because I think X, Y, and Z is valuable or whatever. Feel free to mention it, but I wouldn't be like, please add the label to the project so I can get credit or anything like that. That's kind of weird. Uh, if you're in certain areas, they have events that go on. So I am in uh, the Louisville, Kentucky area. I don't think we have anything going on here, unfortunately, but there's a digital kickoff or global kickoff. Uh, New York City, Denver, Hyderabad, uh, lots of different things, San Francisco, and then closing the hack, uh, some live streams, um, information on organizing an event yourself if that's something you want to do, brand kit and guidelines, which I need to look at these, um, and then uh, some information about Hacktoberfest, some videos, the lore behind Hacktoberfest, it's DigitalOcean's annual event that encourages people to contribute to open source throughout October they talk about why that's important um, and more. It might be fun to read if you aren't too familiar with open source. Um, yeah, there's a bunch of stuff here. You can see some of the sponsors. I, I don't know if the sponsors are really giving out stuff. Um, it looks like Holopen is the main thing this year. So yeah, just something to be aware of. But it's a project that I, a project, it's an event that I look forward to every year. Uh, mostly because it gives me an opportunity to talk about something that's really important to me, open source, and an opportunity to contribute back and get people interested in some of the things that I'm working on. So on that note, what am I working on for Hacktoberfest? Uh, if you haven't seen yet, I'm on Omarkey now. And um, with Omarkey, we like our TUIs. So I can hit this and pull up a TUI. Uh, I have a project called Book that I have written in Go. And let me just pull that up for you. It's Brad Seipert slash book. And it's terminal-based bookmarks. And I'm going to be honest with you, this solves a need, but it is it is bad. It's, it's crappy code. Uh, so I'm going to rewrite it in Zig because that is what I do at this point, at least. 
And uh, I'm going to rewrite it in Zig. And then specifically, I'm going to make it into a 2E because right now it's just a CLI. I'm going to keep the CLI piece so you can still access it like this. Uh, you can add a bookmark like so. You can um, open a bookmark like so. Uh, th this may change. Um, this will probably still stay the same. This might change. Uh, and then search might change as well. Um, it may not, too. I may support all of those. But then I also want to give you a TUI uh, on top of that. So a TUI is a terminal UI. Uh, there's actually this really fantastic uh, uh, company called Charm. Actually, I don't know if the company is fantastic, but the, <laughs> the repos they produce are fantastic. Um, so they have a repo called Bubble T, which is a powerful little terminal UI framework. So if you wanted to make TUIs in Go, you can do stuff like this that is really, really nice and clean. Um, but we're, we're not using Go, right? We talked about doing it in Zig. So um, there is a Zig TUI library called libvaxis that I have started exploring. And I think I'm probably going to use this because it looks really nice and straightforward. And we'll probably talk about that in another video. Uh, outside of that, those are my own projects. But I'm always on the lookout to contribute to open source uh, projects that aren't mine as well. So like I mentioned, Zig Curl, I, it wouldn't surprise me if for HTTP spec I have to do more contributions to Zig Curl. So that's something I will end up doing. Let me just close this. That's not really necessary anymore. And um, yeah, plenty of other Zig projects. This might happen. Uh, I have something that I've been working on in MicroZig, which we'll talk about in another video. And um, I think I might have to do a pull request to the MicroZig project to uh, get something working on my ESP32, which is this little thing, in case you haven't seen an ESP32 before. Uh, yeah, so I think that's it. Um, just wanted to call out Hacktoberfest and, and you know, hopefully drum up some interest in something that I am always interested in and I think is really important. Uh, if you haven't yet, consider signing up for Hacktoberfest. If you don't even want to sign up for it, maybe just contribute more to open source this October or all year or whatever works best for you. Um, I know that it's it can be a lot to ask, but I think that there's a lot of value for everyone in contributing to open source, and hopefully that includes you as well. I think that's it. So if you found the video helpful, please give it a thumbs up. That helps me. I'd like to think that that helps you, and we just live in one big happy circle. Um, besides that, if you haven't, subscribe to the channel so you don't miss out on updates, and join us in the Discord for some more engaging and in-depth conversations. There's a link in the description below. Thanks, and have a great day.